So we've been working with this generic view and we've defined three filter backends. One is the Django filter backend and that's a very customizable one that you can add. And we also have the search filter and the ordering filter from Django REST framework. Now what we're going to do in this video is define our own custom filter backend and we're going to see how easy it is to do that when you need to wrap some custom logic in a filter backend. Now let's start by going back to the Django REST framework documentation on filtering. On the left hand sidebar you should see there's a section here on custom generic filtering. So let's go to that section and we're going to see how we can provide our own generic filtering backend. And all we actually need to do here is override the base filter backend class. And in the class that we define, we need to override the filter query set method. So that should return a new filtered query set. So let's see the example here. This is called is owner filter backend. And you can see it inherits from that base filter backend. It overrides the filter query set method. And you can see it performs this filter here. And it checks that the owner of the given model is equal to request.user. So the purpose of this filter is that it only allows users to see their own objects. We're going to define our own custom filter now. So let's go back to VS Code and I'm going to bring back the sidebar here and let's go to filters.py. Now this file is where we defined the product filter a couple of videos ago. What we're going to do now is define a class and we want to define a filter that only returns products that are in stock. So let's define a class here called in stock filter backend and we need to inherit from that base filter backend. So we need to import the REST framework filters module. And then in that filter module, we can then reference the base filter backend here. And remember the name of the class that we need to override here, or the name of the method that we need to override is the filter query set method. So let's take this definition here and we're gonna paste that in here and define our logic in this method. Now the logic is gonna be very simple. So we have access here to the request that's coming in. We also have access to the query set associated with the generic view and we have access to the view itself as well. So what we're gonna do is take the query set that's coming in as a parameter and we're gonna call dot filter on that query set and we're gonna look at the stock that's on the model. So stock and we want to only return items where the stock is greater than zero. So on an e-commerce website, if we were building one, this in stock filter backend is going to be responsible for only returning items that are in stock for the users to then view on the front end. So it's a very simple piece of logic that's being wrapped by this in stock filter backend. Once we've defined that, we can go back to views.py. And if we go down here to our generic view where we have these three filter backends, we can add the in stock filter backend at the bottom of that. And of course, we also need to import that at the top. So from api.filters, we're already importing the product filter and we can also import the in-stock filter backend. And now we have that available here in filter backends. And what that means is that it's automatically going to filter out any products where the stock count is equal to zero. Let's now test this out on our API. We're going to go back to this page here and I'm actually going to remove this search parameter from the URL. So we're going to go to slash products and get back all of the products. Now I say all of the products, but actually it's going to filter out anything with a stock count of zero here. So if we go back to VS Code and let's just comment out this in stock filter backend at the moment and go back here and refresh, there should now be something in the results and that's a watch here that contains a stock count of zero. So we've got this product with a name of watch and it has zero in stock. When we remove that comment and save the file and go back to this API response, this time, if we search for that watch, you can see that it's no longer present in the response. So that's the purpose of the in-stock filter backend. And just to demonstrate that this is working, I'm going to go back to filters.py and let's change the query set.filter method to query set.exclude. And that's going to perform the opposite action. Basically, it's going to exclude everything from the return data where the stock count is greater than zero. So let's see that in action. If we go back to the API and scroll to the top, Let's refresh the page and this time we only get back a single product and that's the item that has zero in stock, this watch. Now I'm going to go back to the API and change this back to dot .filter and save that. But that is a demonstration of how easy it is to create your own custom filter backend to encapsulate some logic for a given API. REST framework provides this base filter backend. You can subclass that and override the filter query set method in order to define your own logic that you can then add to multiple generic views simply by using this filter backends property on those views. So that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed the content, give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the channel for much more Django and other content. And if you want to support the channel, we have this coffee page here. Thanks again to everybody who's contributed to that. 
We've got lots of exciting stuff planned, so thanks again to everybody who's watching and supporting the channel. In the next video, we're going to move on to pagination using Django and Django REST framework. So we're going to see how to paginate API responses. So that's coming up and we'll see you in the next video.